Greetings. This is a brief guide to the interpretation of the ocular fundus photographs from the Emory Eye Center. In this presentation, we will review the normal ocular fundus, the abnormal ocular fundus, 10 critical conditions not to be missed, an approach to reviewing fundus photographs, and a brief quiz to test your knowledge. The non-Madriatic cameras are readily available, portable, and easy to use. The quality of the pictures produced by these cameras are high quality and can be integrated with the electronic medical record. In this section, we will review the normal ocular fundus. Ocular fundus refers to the interior surface of the eye. Most fundus cameras have a 45 degree view and capture photographs of the posterior pole, which should include the optic nerve head, the macula, and the vascular arcades where most acute pathology is seen. The retinal periphery is typically not included in the standard 45 degree view. If a retinal peripheral pathology is suspected, a composite view should be obtained. Study the pictures of the right ocular fundus and the left ocular fundus. The prominent oval structure is the optic nerve head. The optic nerve head is located in the nasal half of the ocular fundus of each eye. The macula is the slightly darker central part of the retina. The macula provides the highest spatial resolution for visual functions. The retinal vessels emerge from the optic disc and branch out into the superior and inferior parts of the retina. They are called the superior and inferior vascular arcades respectively. The normal human retina is transparent. The color that is observed on fundus photographs are a reflection of the underlying choroidal vasculature. As the amount of melanin pigment in the retinal pigment epithelium increases, the background becomes darker. The normal optic disc is vertically oval, has a reddish pinkish hue, has clear sharp margins, and is approximately 1.5 to two millimeters in diameter. The small depression in the center of the disc is called the cup. The cup to disc ratio is defined as the ratio of the vertical diameter of the cup to that of the disc. In this example, the ratio is about 0.3. In normal adults, this ratio should be less than 0.5. The cup to disc ratio can vary considerably in the normal population as shown in these pictures. A cup to disc ratio exceeding 0.5 is considered abnormal. The normal optic nerve head can show considerable variation in size, shape, color, morphology, and vascular branching pattern as you can observe in this collage. The retinal vessels are branches of the central retinal artery and the central retinal vein. The larger darker vessels are the retinal veins while the smaller, brighter vessels are the retinal arteries. In the next section, we will review the abnormalities that can be observed on ocular fundus photographs. The swollen optic nerve. Compared to the normal optic nerve head as shown here, the swollen optic nerve demonstrates blurred disc margin, disc vessel obscuration, peripapillary hemorrhage, retinal folds, and loss of the optic cup. Optic disc edema is a neuroophthalmic emergency and must not be missed on fundus photographs. Observe the various grades of optic disc edema from the very mild to the very severe. The pale optic nerve. Compared to the right optic nerve, the left optic nerve appears pale. Optic nerve pallor indicates underlying damage such as from ischemia, inflammation, compression, infiltration, or other causes. The cupped optic disc. Compared to the normal optic nerve head, the cup size appears to be increased in both the right and the left optic nerves. One can estimate the cupped disc ratio to be about 0.8 in the right eye and 0.9 in the left eye. Retinal edema can be observed as a fluffy white appearance of the retina due to loss of transparency. This usually indicates retinal ischemia. The retinal vessels must be examined for embolic materials such as cholesterol or fibrin platelet. 
This can indicate cardioembolic or atherembolic sources. Retinal hemorrhage can be seen either in isolation or in combination with other pathology. They can be noted as dot blot hemorrhages, flame-shaped hemorrhages, or extensive retinal hemorrhages. They can be seen in conditions such as diabetic retinopathy, hypertensive retinopathy, age-related macular degeneration, or severe papilledema. Observe fluffy white patches on the retina in these pictures. These are retinal cottonwool spots and indicate retinal ischemia. They can be seen in hypertensive and diabetic retinopathy. Retinal exudates appear as amorphous yellowish material within the retina. They are commonly seen in diabetic and hypertensive retinopathy. Observe the impressive retinal exudates in a star-shaped pattern accompanied by disc edema in the right eye. This is a condition called neuroretinitis and can be caused from a variety of inflammation such as sarcoidosis, viral infections, syphilis, or cat scratch disease. Observe the confluent creamy spots in the macula of both eyes. These are from macular drusen and can be commonly seen in age-related macular degeneration. In the next section, we will review 10 critical conditions that can be diagnosed on ocular fundus photographs. These fundus photographs demonstrate edema of both optic nerve head. This patient should be considered to have papilledema till proven otherwise. This patient needs urgent evaluation including MRI brain and MRV head followed by lumbar puncture to look for causes for elevated intracranial pressure. These are fundus photographs of a patient with malignant hypertension. Observe disc edema in both eyes, tortuous retinal vessels, extensive retinal hemorrhage, and cottonwool spots. This patient needs urgent blood pressure management to prevent irreversible vision loss. These are fundus photographs of an 85-year-old patient with giant cell arthritis. Observe the pale swollen left optic nerve secondary to arteritic entry ischemic optic neuropathy. This is a medical emergency and this patient must be treated with IV steroids immediately. These are fundus photographs of a patient who presents with acute painless loss of vision in the right eye. Compared to the photograph of the left eye, observe diffuse retinal edema in the right eye. Also, the retinal arteries are thinned, irregular, and have a boxcar appearance. This finding is characteristic of central retinal artery occlusion, which is a medical emergency. A stroke cord must be called promptly. These are photographs of patients with detached retina. Observe retinal edema, loss of retinal transparency, and the retinal folds. Patients will frequently present with painless loss of vision in a curtain-like pattern. Occasionally, the retinal detachment may be in the periphery of the retina and may be missed on non-metriatic fundus photographs, or you might be able to catch the very edges of the detachment on these fundus photographs. This is a medical emergency and an ophthalmology consultation should be promptly obtained. These are fundus photographs of a patient who had subacute progressive vision loss in the right eye. Compared to the left optic nerve, observe pallor of the right optic nerve. This patient needs to be evaluated by ophthalmology on an outpatient basis. These are fundus photographs of a patient who presents with acute painless loss of vision in the left eye. Observe diffuse scattered retinal hemorrhage, often called blood and thunder appearance. This patient has a central retinal vein occlusion. An outpatient retinal consultation should be obtained. Diabetic retinopathy must not be missed on fundus photographs. Observe various findings such as retinal exudates, retinal hemorrhage, microaneurysms in these fundus photographs. These patients must be referred to ophthalmology for an outpatient consultation. In these fundus photographs of a 65-year-old male with progressive peripheral vision loss, the optic discs show an increase in the cup-to-disc ratio of approximately 0.8 on the right 
and 0.9 on the left. This patient has glaucoma and must be referred to ophthalmology for an outpatient evaluation. In these photographs of a 70-year-old woman with slowly progressive central vision distortion, observe macular drusen in both eyes. This patient has age-related macular degeneration and should be referred to ophthalmology for outpatient evaluation. In this section, we will describe a systematic approach to reviewing fundus photographs. Are the photographs of good quality? Are you able to visualize the optic nerve head, the retina and the vessels clearly? These are some common artifacts that can impede interpretation of the fundus photographs. These artifacts are commonly seen in patients with physiologically small pupil or those with media opacities. One can avoid artifacts or improve the quality of pictures by some simple steps such as turning off room lights, using the small pupil setting on camera, instructing the patient to blink, instructing the patient to focus on a camera target. Always view the fundus of both eyes for comparison. Systematically review the optic nerve head, the retina, and the retinal vessels. In the last section, we present five cases to test your knowledge. These are fundus photographs of a 60-year-old patient with headache. Review the fundus photographs and identify any abnormalities. These photographs depict normal ocular fundus. These are fundus photographs of a 55-year-old patient who presents with acute, painless loss of vision in the right eye. Study the fundus photographs and identify any abnormalities. Observe retinal edema and a cherry red spot in the right eye. The retinal arteries are thin and attenuated. This patient likely has a acute central retinal artery occlusion of the right eye, which should prompt a stroke code. These are fundus photographs of a 23-year-old obese woman with new onset headaches and blurred vision. Study the pictures and identify any abnormalities. These photographs depict normal ocular fundus. These are fundus photographs of a 30-year-old obese woman with headaches, pulsatile tinnitus, and blurred vision. Identify any abnormalities on these photographs. These photographs show optic disc edema in both eyes. This is indicative of papal edema and the patient should be evaluated by appropriate imaging studies. These are fundus photographs of a 70-year-old with progressive peripheral vision loss in both eyes. Identify abnormalities, if any, in these fundus photographs. This patient has increased cup to disc ratio in both eyes, which warrants outpatient ophthalmology evaluation for glaucoma. Congratulations on completing this tutorial. We hope you enjoyed this brief presentation and you will incorporate ophthalmic fundus photographs in your clinical practice.